In this lesson, we're going to take a look at parameters. So there's the parameter pane in the top corner. If we select, let's say, the rubber toy and we move it, you'll see the parameter change as in the, let's say, the translate Z as we move that object. Now, if we use the middle click ladder, we can actually move things in increments of either tens, ones, point ones, etc., down to point zero zero one, which is pretty small. So that's another way of changing parameters directly in there. You can also just go in and type a value. So we can just say zero. Let's put it back at, at zero. Now, once you have uh, start thinking about the parameters that you're working with, you know, one of the things you might want to do is say, well, I want to share. So I'm going to copy that parameter. I'm going to go over to the squab, the second object, and I'm going to paste relative references. So I'm going to reference the translation of the rubber toy to the squab. And there you can see the expression. Now once you do that, I can select the rubber toy, and as I move it, I get an equal motion coming out of the squab. So those two parameters are actually linked in that way, and, and a lot of expressions get built that way uh, within Houdini. Now we can modify this a bit like going in the opposite direction. We can press a negative so now when we go to move the rubber toy, the squab goes in the opposite direction. And similarly, we could say, you know what, uh, let's have the squab go slower. So we take that same expression and we multiply it by 0 0.5 and it will go at half the speed of the rubber toy. So we're creating this sort of mathematical relationship between the parameter of one object and the parameter of another. So that's something you can do. It's often done within Houdini to connect things. Now, another way of getting some of this information is to go, let's say, on the squab to the rotate Y and go reference scene data. And this pops up a window where we can go find other objects. So we're again, again going to find the rubber toy. We're going to say transforms parameters or transforms and maybe go world. And we're going to specifically go to rotate Y. So again, we're connecting one thing to another. Now if we get the rubber toy uh, and we press R to rotate, as we rotate around Y, we get the same thing happening to the squab. So you can build up these kinds of relationships uh, a number of different ways using these, these things. And you notice if we rotate around another axis, it doesn't affect the squab at all. It's only the one that we connected. So now let's go back to translate. And what we'd like to do now is talk about setting keyframes. That's another way of working with parameters. So you can press K to set a keyframe on that, uh, move that forward, and press K again. Now let's go part way back. Um, and let's change to rotate. And we press R, and we'll rotate that around. Press K to set a keyframe. Go to about here. Let's rotate again and press K to set a keyframe. So we've got them sort of wiggling as they move forward, back and forth here. So you see a whole bunch of keyframes have been set. They've been set to all the channels. We can right click on scale and delete and on rotate X and rotate Z because none of those things were really changing. Uh, but K keyframes everything. Now if we lock these parameters, uh, then they will not get keyframe when we press K. So that's one way to block those and keep them safe. So now uh, we go in. Uh, yep, they're still connected. They're still working like that. Uh, and you can see that they sort of wiggle away as we animate them. So animation, animating parameters is a big uh, task of, of doing animation in Houdini. And that's uh, useful. Now we can also add layer motion effects on top of that. Uh, and this is like a procedural filter that you put on top of your parameter to allow it to, you know, to do things like, in this case, make noise. Um, you know, this would be very hard to keyframe all the little jitters of this kind of thing. So being able to do it with a filter like this is quite nice. And it, it leaves you, because it's procedural, it leaves you the freedom of changing the period, changing different aspects of it. And as you do, it will update and you can see if you like the results. And if we want to tone down the roughness, maybe we get a, a result a little smoother that we like. So these procedural sort of motion effects that you can add on parameters are pretty exciting in that way as well. 
Now, every node has lots of parameters, and so sometimes navigating around and finding them can be a challenge. So there's a little uh, magnifying glass here, and you can search for them in a bunch of different ways, like say, give me everything that's non-default. So those are the six things that uh, parameters we've altered on this node. Uh, time independent, things that are animated, the same nodes, or same parameters rather. Uh, all parameters, we can also do a search, like say, is there something for subdivisions? Oh yeah, there's a checkbox, there's a checkbox for that. Similarly, we can do uh, rotate, so there's the six for that, translate, there's six for that. So you can use this tool to really get in there and find the parameters you need. Well, I hope that you found this helpful and that you have a, a better understanding of how parameters work uh, in Houdini.